Hello friends, welcome back to yet another Facebook live session brought to you by the team here at Byju's. Now this is a part of the Byju's revise program. Now as a part of this session, we've been giving you insights on how well can you prepare for the upcoming board examinations. Now today is the last day of February. From tomorrow, the month of March, which is the month of board examinations begin. So the days of revision are coming to a close rather very soon and you have to start writing your examinations. So in the previous sessions that I have conducted here, I have given you insights on 10 out of the 13 chapters that are there in mathematics. We first looked at relations and functions before looking at inverse trigonometric functions, matrices and determinants and then we looked at the whole of calculus and finally vector algebra. Today we will be looking at three dimensional geometry, linear programming and finally probability. Now before that let me give, give you a brief in, insight into how will the structure of the question paper in maths be. Now the question paper is going to be divided into four sections. We have the very short answer type one mark questions, then we have the short answer type two mark questions, we have the long answer type four mark questions and the very long answer type six mark questions. Four one mark questions, eight two mark questions, eleven four mark questions and six six mark questions. A total of 29 questions will be there in your question paper. You get a total of three hours to write this and you have to be very careful in picking which section to start with. It all depends on what are your strengths and your weaknesses. So there is no single formula as to which section has to be attempted first and which section do you attempt at the end. If you are comfortable with solving the six mark questions, I would always advise my students to start with the six mark questions because these questions have a lot of weightage and it is not good, it's not a good practice to leave all these questions to the end because if you run out of time, you will at the end of the day lose a lot of marks. So if you're okay with solving the six mark questions first, it's always advisable to start with this particular section. Okay, so we are going to start by looking at three dimensional geometry. In the previous session, we looked at vector algebra and I told you in the previous session that in this particular session, which is the one on three dimensional geometry, I'll be continuing from where I left in vectors. So three dimensional geometry starts with the concept of direction cosines. Now direction cosines is an extension of vectors. The angle that any particular vector makes with the three coordinate axis, this will be what comprises of direction cosines and direction ratios. Then we look at lines in three dimensional space. You've looked at straight lines in two dimensional space in, in your 11th standard. In your 12th standard, we move one step ahead and look at lines in three dimensional spaces. And then we look at planes. With that, we conclude the chapter on three dimensional geometry. Now, three dimensional geometry is a rather important chapter from examination point of view because you will sure shot get 10 marks worth of questions from this particular chapter. You will have a one six mark question for sure and one four mark question definitely. Sometimes the examiners also tend to ask a two mark or a one mark question but a four mark and a six mark question which is going to test your knowledge on angle between lines, planes and all the other concepts which are covered in planes will definitely appear in the examination. And three dimensional geometry can sometimes be a little tricky but the the thing with three dimensional geometry is that there are not a huge variety of problems which come in the CBSE examinations. Yes, in your JE and other competitive examinations, they can twist three dimensional geometry a lot. But in CBSE, there are a fixed set of questions which will come from three dimensional geometry. So if you practice these kinds of problems, especially the ones which are given in the miscellaneous example of NCERT, one of the questions should definitely be easy to answer. And the other question, if you are able to attempt, you will definitely get marks for steps. This is something that you have to remember when you're writing your board examinations, that there are marks for steps. Please do not jump steps, skip steps and go just because you know how to solve it. Get out of the competitive examination mode. I've been repeating this in each and every session because that is one point that where students tend to lose marks. They know how to do the problem, but they know these shortcuts because of which they will lose marks in the board examinations. Please do not resort to shortcuts in board examinations. Write the answer with each and every step, elaborate in each and every step and make sure 
that you are getting marks for everything. Not just the answer matters here, all the steps matter when it comes to board examinations. So three-dimensional geometry, quite an important chapter because 10 to 12, 13 marks will come from this chapter. 10 marks, definitely one six mark, one four mark question will definitely come from this chapter. Then we are going to move on to linear programming. Now linear programming fetches one six mark question, that is it. You will not get any four mark, two mark or one mark questions from linear programming. You will get only one six mark question from linear programming. Now linear programming is a chapter that no one should skip because this is a very easy chapter. A few inequalities and you have to solve these inequalities graphically and you get six marks here. There are certain procedures that you need to follow while you're trying to solve linear programming problems. And if you solve each and every problem that is there in your NCRT textbook, that is it. You don't have to do anything more in linear programming. Linear programming cannot be a question, uh, the question that comes from linear program should not be one which you skip and lose marks for because these, pro these problems from linear programming are rather very simple, very straightforward and you are supposed to get marks for this particular question that comes from linear programming. So all those students who are attempting to just pass in the examination, say score 40, 50 marks in the examination. This is one chapter that you are not supposed to skip. Even if you have not seen it so far, please go through linear programming. One, two days of full effort on linear programming and you should get these six marks in your kitty without any worry at all. But I hope that all of you have already gone through linear programming and you know the concept of linear programming and you can solve the linear programming problem in using the graphical method and get marks for the question which comes from this particular chapter. One short, short six mark question comes from linear programming every year and you have to use the graphical method to solve it. There are actually two broad varieties of problems which are solved in linear programming in your NCRT textbook. The first kind is rather simple. The second one which is a transport problem can sometimes be a little tricky. Please solve these transport problems also. These are mainly given in the miscellaneous exercises of the NCRT textbook. If you go through these, you should be able to get marks for the problem which comes from linear programming. So linear programming and three dimensional geometry. In my opinion, these two chapters put together will give you two six mark questions, one four mark question, and sometimes a two or a one mark question from three dimensional geometry. So 16 to 20, 18, 19 marks are definitely coming from three dimensional geometry and linear programming, which leaves us with the last chapter, but one of the most tricky chapters of the 12, the 12 standard textbook, which is probability. Now probability was there also in 11th standard but in 11th standard we looked at very simple probability problems but once we come into 12th standard we're going to look at a lot of new concepts in probability which makes probability a little tricky. We start by looking at conditional probability then we look at concepts such as independent event and move on to total probability theorem, Bayes theorem, we look at distributions we look at mean and variance of distributions, we look at Bernoulli's distribution, binomial distribution, lot of concepts which you've never seen before are all introduced in this last chapter on probability. What makes probability even more tricky is the fact that they don't explicitly mention which concept is a problem coming from. Sometimes while reading the problem, it becomes very difficult to identify whether it is a conditional probability problem or if you need to use Bayes theorem or if it's a problem which is on general probability. So this is what makes probability a little tricky. You have to go through all the problems that are there in the NCRT textbook, solve more problems, wide variety of problems which you can find on our app. If you've not subscribed to our app, you can download the app from the description of the video here, the link that has been provided there using that you can download our app and you can solve a lot of wide varieties of problems which are available on our app. So the key to succeeding in solving probability problems is practice. You have to see a wide variety of problem because it is highly likely that one new problem can be asked from probability in the examination which you've never seen before and you will be completely stumped. So it's important that you have an acquaintance of almost all the different kinds of problems which are on offer so that even if a new problem comes you know that okay I've seen a problem which is more or less on the same lines and understand okay this is a conditional probability problem or this is a total probability theorem problem or a 
problem which is from Bayes theorem. So from probability you can expect a two mark question for sure, two or three four mark questions also. So a total of 10 to 4 all this linear programming problem without a lot of fuss. Only then are you going to achieve whatever target you have set. This linear programming problem cannot be skipped. Three-dimensional geometry, slightly tricky. Sometimes the problems from planes can be slightly twisted and tricky. But again, you have 10 to 12 marks worth of content coming from three-dimensional geometry. Again, a chapter that with a little bit of effort will fetch you at least 50% of the marks on offer. Even those students who are planning to just pass the examination can attempt and solve a few problems from three-dimensional geometry. Now, three-dimensional geometry is not like calculus. If you do not understand calculus, the whole of calculus is gone because three-dimensional geometry can sometimes be solved by imagining things because things are happening in space. You can imagine what is happening and you can solve problems from three-dimensional geometry which is sometimes not the case with probability from where again 10 to 12 marks worth of questions will definitely come. Probability can be a little tricky and to solve probability problems you should have sound understanding of all the concepts which are given in the NCRT math textbook and also you should have a very good understanding of different types of problems. Only then can you solve probability problems properly. Another suggestion that I will tell you is that do not skip the last portion of probability which is on distributions, Bernoulli's distribution, mean and variance of distribution because every year one two mark or one four mark question some generally comes from this section which is on probability distributions. So do not skip that portion for sure. If Bayes theorem doesn't make sense to you, it's not the time to start understanding what is Bayes theorem because it's a little convoluted the concept. So if it's a Bayes theorem problem and you've absolutely no idea what Bayes theorem is, I mean there's there can be very little that can be done at this particular stage here. So people who are trying to pass in the examination, please do not focus a lot on understanding new concepts from probability. If you know the concepts, solve different problems, but don't break your head at this juncture to understand new varieties of problems. So let's do a very quick recap of the whole of mathematics because today's is, today is the last of this revise with Baiju session on mathematics. So in the first session, I spoke about relations and functions, inverse trigonometric functions, matrices and determinants. Generally, 20 to 25% of your paper is from these chapters. A short, short six mark question will be there from relations and functions. A sure short six mark questions from matrices and determinants either on solving a system of linear equations or properties of determinants. So these are concepts which are very very important from relations and functions and matrices and determinants. From inverse trigonometric functions you'll get either a two mark or a four mark question which sometimes is going to test your knowledge on domain and range of inverse trigonometric functions. Then the whole of calculus. Limits, I'm sorry, continuity and differentiability is the first chapter and this is the easiest chapter of calculus from where a short short six mark and a four, two or four mark question will come. So you almost have about eight to ten marks of questions coming from the chapter on continuity and differentiability. These marks cannot be skipped. Even those students who do not know calculus should not skip marks which come from the chapter on continuity and differentiability because the chapters on differentiation, application of differentiation, integration and differential equations can be quite tricky. These four chapters put together will give you almost 40 marks worth of questions but if you are paired with calculus, if calculus gives you a scare then there's nothing much that you can do at this particular point because learning calculus it's too late for that. It's the time to revise calculus. If you've not done calculus, it's going to be a little difficult. That's why I'm saying that continuity and differentiability is going to be something that will bail you out of trouble if you've not done calculus. Continuity and differentiability is a chapter where you can focus on if you have not started preparing for calculus. Of course, among all the other chapters of calculus, the easiest chapter is going to be differentiation and a little bit of application of integration. I've told you that application of integration problem is finding the area between curves and even if you do not know integration, you can get about three out of the six marks which come from there just by plotting the graph and by finding the points of intersection between the curves. Differential equation is again a little tricky. But then vectors is a short short chapter that is going to give you six to eight marks and vectors are not very difficult and you've seen vectors right from your 11 standard days. So vectors is again a chapter from where you cannot skip questions. You are supposed to get marks for the questions which come from vectors. 
Then I told you today that 3D can be a little tricky, but linear programming is again a chapter from where the question is going to be an easy one and you should get all the marks that are on offer from linear programming. Probability again is a little challenging. It is not worth now to invest a lot of time in understanding the concepts. So the last few days before examination, what you must understand is you have to focus on what are your strengths and focus a lot on those concepts which have high return on investment. If you invest a little bit of time on those concepts, they should give you a lot of marks. And I have in these last four sessions told you which are the concepts which are high return on investment and these are the concepts that you must focus on. I think I've been speaking for some time now. Let me take a few questions and with that, let us wrap this session on mathematics, which was a part of Revise with PyJuice. So I have a few questions here. One of the questions is, what are the shortcuts that you will give me for JE mains for chapter on probability? I'm sorry, this is not a session on JE mains. This is a session on CBSE board examination. But because this question actually is about shortcuts, I, it, is, it reminds me of something that I have been emphasizing on, on all these four different sessions. Please do not resort to shortcuts in the board examination. Board examination evaluators are going to pay a lot of attention to each and every step that you write on the paper. Each and every step is going to fetch you marks in your board examination. A six mark question is not going to fetch you six marks for the right answer. It's going to fetch you six marks for the entire methodology. Please do not use any shortcut in board examination, especially L hospitals or the L'Hopital's theorem. Now L'Hopital's theorem is something that completely irritates the ones who are evaluating the paper. Any limits problem, if you solve using L'Hopital's theorem, you are definitely going to get zero marks for that. So shortcuts are not something that you're supposed to use in the CBSE board examinations. Those are used in the competitive examinations. And when we have sessions on competitive examinations, let's talk about shortcuts and their importance at that time. Please get out of all your competitive examination mood, get into the board examination mode because this is time for board examinations. And board examinations are quite crucial because the marks in 12 standard will actually make a big difference in your entire career ahead. There's another very interesting question it is which sample papers are best to practice at the moment well this is the right time to practice a lot of sample papers in fact this is the time when you have to solve more and more and more different types of problems and more importantly you should do past year papers among all the sample papers the best sample papers are past year papers take as many past year papers as you get and solve all these past year papers because Past year papers will give you a clue as to which sections from the textbook are the favorites of the examiners. You can see that repeat, repetition, maybe the numbers won't be repeated, but keep an alarm, make sure that you are not exceeding the three hour limit because this way you will understand which is the area where, which is that is taking you a lot of time and which is the area that you can finish very fast. This is how you can plan where to attempt which at, at what time during the examination to attempt which particular problem. Do I start with the six mark questions? Do I start with the four mark? Do I start with the one mark and go till the six mark? All this you can identify only if you solve a lot of timed papers at this particular juncture because the examinations are around the corner. A few days from now you will be all in the examination hall writing examinations so it is important that you have an idea about where are you good at and where are your weaknesses because a very good understanding of your strengths and weaknesses will play a key role in determining how well can you attempt the questions which come in the board examinations. I think I'm going to wrap up today's session with this because <clears throat> We've given you a lot of insights on how to prepare over this past two weeks when we've had a lot of sessions. Last thing that you must remember, which I've always told at the end of my sessions, is in addition to being prepared academically for the examination, be physically and mentally prepared as well. Eat good food, sleep well, and make sure that you're well prepared physically and mentally, and on the day of the examination, go with a fresh mind which is well rested. Of course, mathematics, this is the time to solve a lot of problems, solve wide variety of problems, do a lot of sample papers, do a lot of timed papers. It's not the time to start looking at concepts. It's not the time to start understanding concepts because that was something that you should have done in the past. 
Now, just focus on solving more and more problems and getting a feel of how the exam paper is going to look like. All the best for the upcoming examination season. Do not be under a lot of stress and pressure. Give your best. Make sure that all of you pass the examination with flying colors. All the best to all of you from the team here at Baiju's and we'll see you later in another series which will start immediately after the board examinations. Bye-bye. Good evening. Have a nice time.